Right now, it's time to join our friends up at the BerkshireEdge.com. They're there 24 hours a day. Well, the website is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, they kind of feel like they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, the BerkshireEdge.com is where you can go uh, to get a full look at what's going on, South County and surrounding areas, and, of course, coming events. And we always touch upon just a few of the topics here on a Wednesday morning. Good morning, Marcy, and good morning, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Well, we are here. To, it feels like 24 hours. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I think today it was 24 hours. <laughs> well, you know, it's <laughs> funny. We had almost no sleep last night. People say to me all the time, you know, when I, I get in here, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I sit at my home studio, and I put together stuff, get into the station by right around 5 o'clock, and I normally leave about 11, and people only think that I'm here from really? like 5 to 11. 11 then, in the morning? Yeah, but then yeah. I get back home, and from 4 until 7 o'clock in the evening, I do more work at my at my home studio to, to set up. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're in media nowadays, uh, uh, those are the hours you work. You just work a lot of hours a day. But the good thing about what I do and what Jill does and what you do is we basically work for ourselves. So it's not like you're working for the man. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? No, it's true. And I, I must say that since we started The Edge, I had never, I mean, I was always a hard worker. I never worked so hard in my whole life <laughs> as I do now. <laughs> but there's something very satisfying. That's exactly it. right. When something goes well, you know, you, you really... You feel very good, and, and you and you and can make course. you can make your decisions instantaneously on the fly. Yeah. What you guys want yeah. to do, it like we like right. we do here. So, you, there's you're, no bureaucracy to check with. We're, we're right. like we're like Muhammad Ali's. We float like butterflies and sting like bees. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, we can adopt that. It's, a, it's our it's our motto. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, speaking about floating like butterflies, stinging like bees, not exactly an exciting annual town election in Great Barrington. No. No, no. <laughs> you know, I read in the New York Times yesterday that uh, people in uh, New York are hardly even paying attention to the, the mayoral race there. Um, but I think on the local level we're having the same problem, that nobody's paying much attention to the local race. And it's next week. I mean, no, it's it, it's not next week. It's it's very soon. Though. The town meeting is next week. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things. So well, uh, we have town meeting, and then we have the election. Then we have the election, yeah. right? It's one of those things, though, like uh, it appears to me that Andrew Yang is going to be the next mayor of New York, so we'll have to see, see how that know. goes. Well, but, yeah, which, right. but but that's the problem nowadays uh, with COVID-19 and with all the responsibility that comes on local elected officials, uh, and uh, this includes planning and zoning and everything. Uh, it's no longer like it used to be just good old small town government because people lawyer up. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know it's 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 a job that a lot of people now uh, they don't want to get involved in because of all the extracurricular stuff that you have to do. Oh, it's a very hard well, job. It, it takes a lot of time, and yeah. not everybody. You know, I, I think the town government that we have in New England, you know, is is based on you know a um, you know people working in town. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, and so they're not out of town a lot, and um, but times have, of course, changed since And then. also, local government has become much more complicated. I mean, yeah. this is set up in a kind of you know simpler agrarian uh, society, but now we have all kinds of you know government regulations, and uh, um, it's extremely time-consuming, and everybody has an opinion. Um, and uh, um, it's 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 a very hard job, and I'm amazed that anybody runs for it. <laughs> right. not, I mean, not, it's not that I'm amazed that nobody's paying any attention. I'm amazed that anybody wants the job. And now we have one um, seat up for re-election and two new people yep. running against the incumbent. Right. And they've got lawn signs up all over town, and, you know, they're spending money on being... Uh, um, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I, I hope I don't sound like uh, dismissive. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that uh, there are these, this many people who want to be involved, and, you know, we, we need to be very grateful to them. Yeah. But, um, 
you know, it, it's a it's it's a big commitment and it's unpaid. I think they get no, they get, they get a little a little small stipend and some yep. insurance. Yeah, yeah, um, health insurance, but. Um, it's the, it's, it's it's the way it is. It's nowhere near though. sufficient yeah. payment for the time that they have to put in. So are you that's guys? New England town, town, that's New England town meeting, though. Right. You know, it's it's a it's a form of government that is uh, it is uh, uh, in a way it works really well for us. Well, actually, it, it does work well for us, and it involves yeah. a lot of work. But in the end. Uh, the people uh, who who head up town government and work, they don't make the decisions. That's the great thing about this. The people no, the in town the meeting end, does. The town right. meeting makes the decision and approves everything right. that's been approved before by the selectmen and boards of finance. So, the people make the choice uh, in the end. So, it's a little convoluted, but it's a little. But it's. But you know what? It works. It really does work. It really does right. work. So right. yes, and and the government is is really closely tied to the people, yep. and that's uh, important. Yep. I want to go on New to England. <laughs> yeah, I want to go on to your next story because I don't know uh, if the word toxins and uh, and water are around our area. Uh, will ever go away. You've got Mickey Friedman, uh, an analyst of the cleanup of the toxins from Housatonic River, uh, has uh, has has written an analysis of the and the status of that campaign. Oh yeah, this is a devastating article. Yeah, and, it is. and uh, everyone should read it. Yeah. Um, well, it Mickey is. has been following this story for decades. Um, you know, this is the fight over removing polychlorinated uh, biphenyls. Uh, which are proven to be a, a carcinogen that were uh, released into the river by the General Electric plant in Pittsfield for decades and decades and decades in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Knowing full well what they were doing. Yeah. And um, the, uh, it, it, you know, it's just floated down, and it's, it, it's a substance that will not, it, it just does not break down. So the it clings to the soil, and um, it's it's a it's a dangerous substance in the in the in the sediment that's both on the banks of the rivers of the Housatonic and um, in the in the riverbed itself. So it's it's something that the EPA has finally got around to declaring a danger, and they've had it removed. Uh, in Pittsfield, they had to excavating the, the river, which was quite a quite a chore, uh, at General Electric's expense. Um, and uh, but there's still some remaining PCBs that have because they, even though they were they were dumped into the river, you know, many decades ago, they're just indestructible. So it's still prevalent in some of the down uh, down reaches of the. Who's a tonic, like down in South Berkshire County and in Connecticut? Well, I was going to say uh, this. This is a story that 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 reaches everybody here in Connecticut yes, because the Housatonic right. uh, only gets the flow only gets stronger and bigger the further south you go, uh, and right. and uh, and like you say. Uh, just just imagine you know, they say at a nuclear power plant the radiation in the rods that they have to take out last hundred. Well, PCBs are every bit as dangerous as that. They are yeah, every bit as, as dangerous and as long lasting. Yeah, uh, they just don't go away, and they're every bit as dangerous as nuclear waste. I, I th- sometimes think people lose lose that side of PCBs. I mean, when you have a transformer explode outside your house, when you see them come replace it. Um, it's almost like they're in hazmat suits. Yeah, that, that, it's, it, that's how dang, and PCBs are in things like that. Uh, they're all right. over the place. And one place you don't want them is your river. <laughs> it's just simple. Well, no, it, and not only that, but uh, you also don't want them taken out and putting put in landfills yeah. uh, in your town where they will eventually leach right back right into the groundwater. Well, uh, let's not you know. PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls were a great boon to the to the electrical transform yep. transmission business because they it's a coolant for the transformers uh, that are up on poles that people can see those big cylindrical uh, devices on the top of poles that allow the current to be stepped down from uh, high voltage to 
voltage that it, go, it goes into the houses, and um, it it's a great coolant. However, it's a carcinogen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like serious as, asbestos serious was carcinogen. asbestos was great for the break in and for the linoleum and for the tiling industry many many years yeah. ago, and we found out, wow, this, you know, this is really not good stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. you shouldn't breathe it. <laughs> breathe yeah. it. It's 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 pretty amazing, and and when you talk about uh, future generations, uh, people tend to poo poo the idea as well. Uh, Why well, you talk about my kids and my grandkids? Well, here's a very good reason. PCBs. I was a teenager when they first started talking about it. I'm now 68 years old, yeah, and it's still right. not settled. <laughs> right, right. So. Well, it's a, it, it, it was an amazing um, and da very damaging environmental hazard. Uh, it is still. And they've removed a good num a, a amount of it from around the, uh, the river in Pittsfield. But it's still it floated downstream, and it, and it's um, it's still embedded in the in the to some degree in the in the in the riverbeds. And even when the riverbeds are cleaned up, like uh, like Marcy was saying, uh, you're still going to have those PCBs in landfills in these towns. And uh, well, the, you know, and the argument right now, and what you know, what people in Lee, for example, are very upset about is that. Uh, you know, they. I mean, they're it's they're not going the full measure, okay. so they they want to sort of take it out of the river and put it in a landfill. Um, you know, Mickey is saying that uh, you know the the, uh, um, the the solution is is you know capricious, uh, um, cheap, and uh, possibly illegal. Yeah. So. Um, and, you know, and, and the only way to fight it at this point may be to take it to federal court, which is a very expensive proposal. And GE has the money. To do and, it. That's uh, exactly and, right. And the towns don't. Yeah. Well, I want to yeah. go on to your next topic yeah. because uh, Sharon uh, has decided to invest $30,000 in engineering here in Sharon. Uh, with the Sharon uh, Broadband Committee, uh, to right. see exactly what it might cost, what needs to be done uh, to bring high-speed Internet access. Now, we do have Comcast, and we have one gig service here at the station, but not everybody throughout these rural towns right. has that. And uh, and you've got a story on Egerma becoming the latest uh, town. They've, they're trying to adopt plans to bring high-speed Internet access to the uh, to people, uh, there's a lot to of things. Everyone. That, yeah, there's, they 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 had it already to a significant number of people, um, but now they want to bring it to everyone, right. which is you know they want to extend it all the way through Egremont, and that is really amazing. Yeah, well, the, but it, you know, it used to be. I mean, when this, you know, many years ago, it used to be, internet was considered a a kind of luxury item but now it's absolutely essential you know? and as the pandemic proves I mean, yeah, if you don't yeah. have internet you can't be you can't participate the question is how to in the in our rural uh, areas uh, is, is the best because it's hilly uh, the best way is to bring it in on um, you know to string a line on the poles that uh, so people can have a, a very high-speed connection uh, right to their house, so they're not depending on a, a Wi-Fi broadcast. And um, but this is the, the they're you know all the great Berkshire towns as well as other towns in in the, in the New England are trying to take advantage of because well, it's too expensive to do what they call expensive. the last mile. I mean, yeah. every town has has high-speed internet coming into it. Uh, Duval Patrick administration made sure that that happened so it goes into a hub in each town but you know the the expense is getting it to the, what they call the last mile which may be the last many miles in these towns that have sparse population who are very uh, far apart so it's very so but Egremont I mean is doing it um, yep. With a company called Fiber Connect, which is local here in the Berkshires, that has already you know wired the downtown of Great Barrington, and uh, boy, I wish that we could have it at our house. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, we have 
we have spectrum, um, but this is going to be so much better. Well, it's coming also in the future, and, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, I'm one of the beta testers, I'll, I'll be receiving my Starlink uh, equipment uh, within the next month or two and install it, and uh, the more satellites they put up, the better it's going to get, and I'm going to report back to their sharing commission. I'm already reporting to them how, how my 1G Comcast service is working. But uh, when I install Starlink at my house, it might, things like this, you know, affect radio stations uh, like us who need to communicate to our various transmitters. So we're, we're exploring all those options. And uh, I just think the town of Sharon is doing it the right way, setting aside some engineering money, uh, $30,000, to see exactly what it would cost uh, to wire the town. So uh, it's, it's, it's a problem that towns are going to have to solve if they want to keep uh, having people move into their towns. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's 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 similar to to when they strung the telephone lines, yeah. you know, years ago. Or the electric lines. <laughs> the electric lines. It's it, it's become essential yeah. that you know for for everybody now. All right, now we got to go on to COVID nineteen uh, and uh, the yeah, value. Oh, do we have do we have to talk about that? <laughs> the value of the value of vaccinations. I was just talking with my meteorologist this morning, and basically uh, what I told him, I said, listen, if you're if you've got vaccinated and you've got your two shots and you're two weeks out or you got your one J&J shot and you're two weeks out, you know what? Just carry a mask with you. And if you feel uncomfortable, yeah. put it on. You know, it's one of those things that, that you cannot you can no longer worry about people who don't want to get vaccinated. Uh, you just have to do what's good for you, you know, basically. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they're not doing what's good for themselves yeah. or for anybody else. Yeah. But you know, people who defy the mask requirement. Or you know, Connecticut's, Connecticut's going to get rid of the uh, in stores, going to give stores the options uh, whether or not to let people uh, stay and get closer together or not. But they're not getting rid of the mask option in store no, in, in, no, in 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 stores. No. But this is a the, restaurant. But this is going to be something that's going to that's going to slowly slowly develop over the next year. Uh, and uh, the mask debate is only going to get worse. It really yes, is. it is. No, because uh, now we're down to, the, I mean, everybody who want or not everybody, but almost everybody who wants to be vaccinated now, I mean, if you're 16 or over, you now have access. But, um, and, and the reports all indicate that the number of vaccines being given has slowed down because now we're into those people who are reluctant or resistant, or, or determined not to. Um, so, so um, you know, we have a problem. I mean, this, this virus is going to stay alive in those people, and it's going to be dangerous for the rest of us. Yeah. It's one of those stories that, once again, we'll be following for a while. I re- yeah. We only have about five minutes left, and there's there's something I want to talk to you about, and then there's number five. And we'll, The first thing, are you guys uh, anticipating and waiting for the vote count today up at uh, Mass Mocha? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's right. They're counting. The, the, <laughs> they're video um, counting, showing each. It's it's really a complicated process. But you know what? We talked about uh, nonprofits and and the pay inequity. Uh, this decision, whatever happens up there, could have a big effect union, in South County. Union decision. Right? Yeah, the union. Whether there will be unionized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it it's a pretty it's good it's got some pretty ramifications so I it can't is. can't wait to see your story on that now we can go on to your <laughs> agricultural desk and Berkshire farmers have adapted to the pandemic conditions this is the farm desk yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <clears throat> well it's it's how the farmers are adapting to the pandemic that's our that's what this story is about yeah. and um, you know as as our writer says that farmers are are terrifically resilient, but um, you know on the other hand they need to go to market too, and um, <clears throat> so it's it's a, they're trying to uh, have you know maintain this kind of uh, uh, farm to market uh, you know access, but at the same time you know they keep themselves safe, <laughs> um, and that's what our story's about. And they've done it amazingly yeah. well. You know, they have, uh, you know, over, I mean, not over the dead of winter, but even in the dead of winter, the uh, uh, Berkshire Grown has continued to have its winter farmer markets, um, farmer's markets. But, um, 
but also, I mean, the farmers have been selling right from their farms, which is unusual. You know, and I, we wonder what's going to happen in uh, in the next, you know, this next summer, whether they'll continue to do that, because it's probably easier for them to just sell right from their farms than to have to transport it. But, um, but it, you know, we have so many wonderful farms around here. We have a really vigor. Yeah, we have a really vigorous uh, kind of farmers market uh, culture here, and farm to table culture. Uh, yeah, you know, which really, you know, I mean, we are one of the originating points of the farm to table movement here in Great Barrington. But um, you know, there are a number of organizations that support farmers. I mean, there is Berkshire Grown, which is promoting farmers and their produce, but. There's also Agricultural Ventures, which um, makes loans available. It's a very interesting organization that makes loans available to to farmers. You know, because the the, the hardest part is is getting financing, especially at the beginning of the season when you don't have much collateral left. So, um, and we have a lot of CSAs where people can invest in in their in local farms by buying the produce up front and giving the farmers money. So, this is a really, I mean, a, this is a very interesting area, and there there are a lot of lot of a uh, lot of things going on. But we were we are saving our farmers. Well, uh, right? and they are saving themselves actually. <laughs> <laughs> They're ingenious, and, yes. they work, and they work so hard. <laughs> and necessity is the mother of invention. So, you know, they are they are uh, working hard. It's not just uh, that they're farmers. They're, it's now agribusiness, really. Uh, yeah. they, they've come right. up, uh, they really have come up with ways, because the family farms, uh, it, you know, it, it just it just doesn't hand down anymore from from generation to generation. But the people that are excited about local agriculture, local farming, local, as you yep. say, uh, farm to table, uh, are what's rescuing this. And then the other people that follow up with the farmers markets and everything like that. It it, it all works together to keep farming a major part of our communities. Well, it right. does, and you know we have to mention the some local outlets like the co-op and. Uh, Guidos that insist on, um, you know, uh, buying, lo- from local. buying from local farmers that sustain uh, many of the farmers in our area, you know. Um, and you can be guaranteed that the food is safe and, and, fresh. and fresh. Yeah. You know. So, right. in fact, that's where we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes, I mean, it's a lot easier than growing our own, which <laughs> Um, farming. But, you know, the farmers have, you know, they have, I mean, in this past year, they've developed online sales uh, processes. They've developed new businesses, like uh, all the you know, interest- microgreens yeah. and, and vermicompost, uh, all- you know, that they're selling. I mean, they're... they're they're really very, they, they've been resourceful. very resourceful. And everything that they've developed during this pandemic will only ensure their success in the future. Yes. That's that's that's, that's right. the one right. good thing about this. Well, yes. we are out of time exactly once huh. again. Uh, okay. But, oh dear. But okay. once again, we only touch upon a few stories that you'll find at theberkshireedge.com. And, of course, their, uh, their great calendar that has uh, a great listing of all events coming up uh, in the area. Guys, we'll speak to you next week. Okay. Okay, okay Marshall. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Yep. The com once again on the web, and you'll find them here on a Wednesday morning on Robin Hood Radio. Also uh, online, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on This Week in Berkshire Edge.